to order. Can we have a roll call, please, Ms. Diaz? Councillor Garcia? Present. Councillor Abeta? Here. Councillor Lindau? Here. Councillor Vigil Coppler? Here, and today's the 12th, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> whole COVID <laughs> thing's got me all messed up. <laughs> and Chairman Rivera. I'm here. We have a thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Villacobber. Next approval of the agenda. Any changes from staff, Ms. Wheeler? Uh, no changes from staff, Chairman. Anything from the committee? Wishes of the committee? Move to approve. Second. Motion for uh, approval of the agenda by Councillor Bill Copper, second by Councillor Lindell. Any further discussion? Sina, can we have a roll call vote, please, Ms. Diaz? Councillor Garcia? Yes. Councillor Abeta? Yes. Councillor Lindell? Yes. Councillor Bill Copper? Yes. And Chairman Rivera? Yes. Next, approval of the consent agenda. Any changes from staff, Ms. Wheeler? No changes, Mr. Chair. All right, what would, like, what would the committee like to discuss further with regards to uh, consent items? Councilor Lindell. Thank you, Chair. Uh, item E, please. E is in Edward? Correct. Okay, E, anything else? Councilor Viho Cobbler? Uh, item B and C. B is in boy, C is in Charlie. Yes, thank you. Okay, anything else? Councilor Garcia or Councilor Beta? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, thank you. All right, what are the wishes of the committee? Move to approve as amended. Second. Motion for approval as amended. By Councilor Lindell, second by Councilor V. Hill Coppler. Any further discussion? We have a roll call vote, please, Ms. Diaz. Councilor Garcia? Yes. Councilor Abeta? Yes. Councilor Lindell? Yes. Councilor V. Hill Coppler? Yes. And Chairman Rivera? Yes. Thank you. Approval of the minutes from March 29th, 2021, Public Works and Utilities Committee. Any changes from staff? No changes, Chairman. Anything from the committee? Wishes of the committee? Move to approve. Second. Motion for approval of the minutes by Councillor Lindell, second by Councillor Beta. Any further discussion? We have a roll call vote, please, Ms. Diaz. Councillor Garcia? Yes. Councillor Abeta? Yes. Councillor Lindau? Yes. Councillor V. Hill Coppler? Yes. And Chairman Rivera? Yes. Uh, next round, uh, public comment. Do we have any public comment for this evening, Ms. Diaz? Mr. Chair, there was no public comment received. Very good, thank you. And I don't see anybody on that may be here to make comment, so thank you. Next, we're on to presentation and informational items. The Public Utilities Update on Quarterly Employee Trainings. Mr. Jones. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you, members of the committee. Um, if this committee, um, we didn't include an informational item on January, February, and March trainings for employees. Um, I compiled all the division and sections <clears throat> information into a, into a table and I've presented that to the committee and we are available for any questions. Thank you. All right. Are there any uh, questions for Mr. Jones on, uh, on what he's uh, prepared for the committee? Councilor Vio Coppler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Shannon, for this report. I, I'm very, you know, very happy to get this. I know we, I think we changed it to quarterly. And uh, um, so thank you for following up and, and having this before us. Um, and I'm wondering, Ms. Wheeler, are you going to have a report as well? Uh, maybe the next meeting or? 
Uh, yes, uh, Chairman, uh, Councilor Hill Coppler Public Works will compile their report for the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, the percentage listed here, this is only because it's the first quarter. Am I correct, Mr. Jones? Uh, Mr. Chair, Councilor Vial Coppler, I'm actually the, the last presentation, I think, which is with January. Uh, Chairman Rivetta had requested a percent, I think really a magnitude of, we were doing the trainings, but um, I think it may be more like the success rate of how many people were attending. <clears throat> so it's actually his recommendation to include a column. Um, some of the trainings are section specific. Um, so the numbers do fluctuate, uh, but ultimately we're looking at uh, providing information of how many, not just how many employees attended the training, but what percentage of the of the section that they're within were able to complete it. Um, so again, it's just a, another informational uh, measurement matrix that we've included. Okay, so maybe I can use an example. Um, avoiding injuries, I'll just choose that. It's kind of like at the toward the top. There's four employees. Does that mean there's only four employees in this section? Or four employees of, of what? So it's 23% of what? Um, Chairman, Council Rio Coppler, so there were four employees in attendance, and those four employees that completed that training represent 23% of the section. So that section, um, so this is operation and maintenance of the wastewater treatment facility, um, and so that is probably about 16 or 17 individuals, uh, four of which completed that training, that specific training. Okay, uh, so avoiding injuries, I, I just happen to choose that. That's, that's, that's kind of pretty important. So is the goal to have 100%? I mean, is your goal to have 100% of everything on attendance eventually? Um, Councilor Vial Coppola, it, it is or as close to as we can get. Um, again, the trainings are typically conducted by, a, um, in this situation, could be a shift supervisor. Um, so depending on where the uh, we're through the schedule of the trainings they're at. Um, and again, I'm kind of reading between the lines, but with four individuals completing that training, it was probably a shift of four people that conducted the training together. Um, another supervisor may have already completed that specific training um, earlier in the year, or that may be in the upcoming schedule. Um, but we do kind of leave it a little bit open to the supervisor to kind of choose from the menu of, of trainings that need to be completed. Um, so that's, again, that's kind of me reading a little bit between the lines. Okay, then if we go to the vector safety refresher, there's 100% in attendance. So does that mean of these seven, those are the only seven that have to take that class? Uh, Council, that is, that is correct. Seven people attended it, and that represents 100 people of, that, of the section of the vector operators for the okay. collection section. And then I think we get down to the very last one, OSHA. Well, I guess my question is, and maybe there's more OSHA, but is it, shouldn't the goal be to be 100% of anything that OSHA asks us to do, we should do, right? Uh, that is correct. So again, the section um, wastewater is, is listed that as all their employees, all their sections. Uh, for this quarter, nine employees were able to get through the OSHA 10 course. Um, so again, looking at uh, over the course of the year, the intent would be to get everyone through especially on more of the long, uh, the longer type trainings that may take employees away for two, three days a week. Um, we do space, we do space those out. All right, um, thank you for that. And then the last thing, did, does, is the safety office aware of all of this training that you've been doing, you all coordinate so they can have it in their books? Council Vera, that is the intent. Uh, so definitely the tracking of um, the employee attendance um, so there's a sign-in sheet with um, any curriculum that that is forwarded to the safety office so that they're aware. Uh, the safety office is also a resource available to supervisors. So uh, for example, if, if I was scheduled to conduct a training on slips, trips, and falls, I may be able to get curriculum from the safety office or maybe even recruit the safety office to help um, facilitate that training for me. So they're both a resource and we do provide them the attendance list for tracking. So on one of these meetings before that we had, I don't know if it was the last one or before that, but I went ahead and um, 
talked with the safety director to let her know all of this training was going on and to, to see if she was aware of it. And I directed her to the agenda item where she could see like this chart. And uh, it was, it was a, a real good eye opener for her to know that these, all of this training's going on because it, you know, as a, just a well-roundedness whole for the city that the training office knows what's being offered and uh, safety training that is. And um, so I, I would just make a suggestion that maybe you could just send her this whole presentation so she can see all these classes that you're doing. I think it would be real helpful if you didn't okay. already. Um, I did not send her this memo, but I could, I could forward that. Um, that'll be done tonight. I think that would be great. That'd be terrific. Thank you. Uh, you know, you might as well get credit for all this stuff you're doing. <laughs> I, I didn't really do it, but thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, that everybody's doing and you're, you're here presenting. So I think it would be really good, you know, to share the information. That, that's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Councillor Beta, did you raise your hand or were you just no? No, okay. I just had an itch. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> uh, Mr. Jones. Um, you know it is pretty impressive what you guys are doing. I wonder if at any time you, through uh, HR, and I know we talked about this a long time ago. I know the fire department does some of it. Um, they actually there's some classes that you can get credit for college credit for doing some of these. Um, first aid and CPR may be one of them. Um, so I don't, I don't know if that's worth it for you and, and the employees, but maybe worth something to look into and see if, uh, you know, maybe worth getting some of your employees uh, some college credits if they are interested in doing that. Yes, sir, I'll look into that. Uh, any other? Questions and, and again, Council Councilor Vio Coppola, this is uh, still fairly new information. So, is there anything you would like to see different about the way it's presented? You're on mute, Councilor. If I thank you, if it would be, um, if it wouldn't be too much, I mean, the 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 part that would make the chart more understandable is like what the percentage really addresses. Is it like seven out, seven attended out of 15? Uh, and then you can figure out what that means or something like that. The variable that I think is missing is how many are, are eligible and should attend. So we kind of know what we're missing. So the, the part we don't know is how many employees still need to take these classes. You know, so I'm always- Sorry, would it help to replace the percentage then with, you had, uh, for example, the first one, the aerial safety, you had six out of 20 employees take it? Right. Would that but be I more think the helpful? percentage is good. We could even just use that same column of how many employees and like six out of 10 or, you know, and use that same column so we'd know how many are left. Would that be easy enough to do, uh, Mr. Jones, to put six and then maybe a backslash out of 20, six out of 20 or six out of 50, whatever it was? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. We can definitely make sure I'll include that. All right. Would that be helpful, Councillor Vihilkopter? I think it would be very helpful. Um, I mean, we now know what it stands for, but for anybody that's looking at this in the future, and uh, it just gives you a baseline. And I always believe what gets measured gets done. So you you know where you stand. All right. Thank All right. You. So if we can make that change next time, uh, Mr. Jones, that would be great. Done. Thank you. Thank you for your work on this. And thank you for the uh, presentation. Uh, we're on to uh, number eight, action items and consent. And the first item is uh, item B which is an ordinance regarding the Independent Salary Commission. Um, and this was pulled by Councillor Vio Cockler. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just had some questions here and they're based on the discussion that, uh, that I remember from previous discussions about this bill. And if anybody can shed some light on this, because because I, I remember that there was some discussion about the appointments being made independent of the mayor. And in this, it still has the mayor appointing. So I don't know if, if that's, I didn't see any other amendments, maybe I missed them, but um, that, that, that's one that, that I'm still wondering about. And then, um, and even if it's still gonna be like that, then I wondered if any counselor thought about the committee appointing their own chair. I know I've seen that done in many, um, many task forces and committees and such uh, where, the, where the group gets together and they appoint their own chair. That's, that's another possibility. And, and then the other one is, I'm, I read it as carefully as I could and it seems to me that this goes into effect in the year 2020. Any changes would go into effect in the year 2026. I'm assuming January 1st, 2026. I just want confirmation that I'm reading that right. And that the, the, and that the first meeting of this group related to this would be on April, 2024. Am I reading uh, this thing right? Ms. McSherry, can you answer that question? Your daughter, Councillor Vigil Coppler, a couple of things. So the changes would go into effect into the ordinance um, in the same schedule as most um, ordinances, so five days after publication, mm -hmm. um, which would change it from the committee needing to meet within every four years from the last meeting um, to be every four years starting in 2024. Mm -hmm. um, so that change would happen immediately. But I think what you might be talking about is the actual salary change would happen in 2026. So that's accurate. But so the salary itself, any new changes would go into effect for the salary itself in 2026 because the committee would meet in 2000. 24, and then the election would be in 2025, and then the salary would go into effect in 2026. Right, okay. I just wanted to make sure I was reading that right. And then um, I guess, well, I know this went back to, you know, to the committees back and forth, and, and the issues were whether the mayor would appoint, and I know there was discussion about how we could not have that happen, but it's still written the way it is. And then um, I'm wondering if any, if any, in any other discussions in other committees, if they talked about the committee once they meet appointing their own chair. I don't know if that was ever brought up in anything. And I see Councillor Garcia's hand, but uh, well, anyway, those are my questions. Maybe after Councillor Garcia speaks, then I'll have more clarity on this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Hillcobler, Councilor Garcia. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you for bringing up what we had spoke about at last meeting, Councilor V. Hillcobler. Uh, so, Councilor Lindell and I have been looking into the issue of uh, taking the authority of the appointment out of the mayor's hand. Um, right now, we're finalizing an amendment that will be prepared in time for final approval of the governing body. So we're we're putting the final final touches on it, and uh, that will be presented, and um, the governing body will have the opportunity to uh, take that into consideration. Um, Councilor Lindell, I don't know if you want to kind of give more specifics on what we're working on. I think you covered it, Councilor. I mean, it's pretty simple, and um, we'll have that. Um, I appreciate uh, Councilor Garcia. Um, he really took the lead on that and um, I've just weighed in on it. And um, I think we'll have something that's, um, I think to the two of us, <laughs> uh, more acceptable than um, what we currently have. So we'll see. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Ms. Yeah, McSherry. Ms. McSherry, oh, you sorry, have your sure. hand up. Did you want to comment? Yes, uh, Chair Rivera, I did. Um, we did talk about last time needing to update the caption in terms of timing if we were going to add some other substance. Um, so we have published the caption as it is in its current form. 
and it doesn't speak to changing the nominating process or the appointment process. Um, so it's certainly something we can do. Um, it's not been published as a contemplated amendment in this particular legislation. Um, so that was my, that's my primary comment. We wouldn't right, be able so to do it under the current publication for a public hearing. We'd have to either republish the caption um, or do it as a separate ordinance, which is totally possible. And the process wouldn't get started for another two years anyway, or three years. So the last time I heard you speak, we had to do these changes or make these changes by a specific date in April. Um, is that still the case? Chairman Rivera, I do recommend that. Um, the commission was required to meet at least once every four years under its existing ordinance, under the current ordinance language. Um, so to, in order to accomplish that, the commission would need to be appointed and meet and identify a new salary by the end of April this year. So um, what I hear you say is Councilor Lindell and Councilor Garcia with their changes uh, may want to discuss with you and your staff or your staff um, possible changes to the caption itself. Um, Chairman Rivera, what I would recommend is just introducing a new ordinance and just starting just a parallel process to make that change because that's, that's essentially what it is would be an additional change to the ordinance that was not contemplated in this change to the ordinance. So it could easily just be a new amendment to the ordinance through a bill. Okay. All right, fair enough. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Garcia, you still have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I guess question back for the city attorney. So with the way it's structured, I mean, I think it's a little unrealistic for us to pass this on the 28th and have a committee appointed and meet by the end of April. So um, uh, I, I guess we'll I'll seek your guidance on, on how to best move forward because that is gonna be an amendment we will put forward. It's, it's not ifs, ands, or buts, it will be coming forward. So I don't know if we just pause this or we rewrite the caption. What do you, what do you suggest? Rivera, Councilor Garcia, I was suggesting that we introduce a new bill because otherwise we'll need to republish and then we will not make the deadline. You are right, we would not make the deadline. So my legal suggestion in order for the council and the city to meet its legal obligations is to pass this bill and then to introduce another bill, which we can help you. As soon as we know what you wanna do, we can help you write that bill very easily and you could introduce it. If you wanna do the caption tomorrow, I can help you with that. Introduce it, or at, I'm sorry, Wednesday, on Wednesday's council meeting, we, we can introduce it immediately. Okay, great. Thank, thank you so much. I appreciate that. We'll, we'll get with you. I'll uh, reach out and put some time on our calendars. Um, and the only other thing I was going to respond to was uh, Councillor Vigil Coppler's uh, comment in regards to the chair appointment. I think that's something we weren't working on. Um, and I think maybe that can fall into maybe this whole uh, redrafting of the ordinance, since that looks like it's going to be a have to, route we'll have to take. Um, I'm, I'm open to that as well. But, but that wasn't something that Councillor Lindell and I were working on. So um, no other questions for me, Mr. Chair, or comments. Thank you. Councillor Garcia. Uh, Councillor Vigil Coppler, you have your hand up. Thank you. Uh, well, I, I would be interested in, in jumping in with I don't know, it's not written yet, so I don't think it would be an amendment to your bill, which hasn't been written yet. So uh, if you wanna take my comment as a, a friendly suggestion, um, I'd be okay with that. Sure. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, questions or comment? All right, so what are the wishes of the committee? Ms. McSherry, what Based on what you just heard, would you recommend that we move this on or that we wait for a substitute bill to come forth? Councilor Rivera, I'm, I'm suggesting a second, a second bill. So I, I, I do recommend that the, the council passes this. So if you could recommend passage, unless you have concerns with the current proposals, not so you can always make additional proposals and the proposals I think that are being proposed don't conflict with what's being proposed as changes now. They're just additional changes. Um, 
the caption now doesn't deal with those sections. It doesn't try to change um, the appointment method or the um, chairperson. It just leaves it. So those, you know, if we want to change those sections, those sections weren't part of the proposed bill currently um, in terms of the intent of the changes. Um, so unless there's a concern with the currently proposed changes in terms of starting in 2024 and having the, the process be essentially skipping this year, then I would recommend passing this bill. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Councilor Vio Um Well, I, I would like a, to make a motion to move it forward without a recommendation. Is that yeah. okay, uh, Ms. McSherry? Chairman Rivera, we've had at least one committee recommend passage, so I think we're fine for getting it, you know, to, to meet its timelines that we have on the agenda currently, so it won't cause any problems now. Okay. All right, so was that a motion, Councillor? Yes. All right, Second. so we have a motion to move this forward without a recommendation by Councillor Vigil Copler, a second by Councillor Garcia. Any further discussion? We have a roll call vote, please, Ms. Diaz. Councillor Garcia? Yes. Councillor Abeta? Yes. Councillor Lindau? Yes. Councillor V. Hill Coppler? Yes. And Chairman Rivera? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. We're on to uh, item C which is a resolution establishing a work plan for improving access to affordable housing opportunities for residents of the city of Santa Fe. And uh, Councilwoman Villarreal, um, let me know that the amendments that are in PrimeGov are not, not quite accurate. So I just forwarded you um, the amendments that she's proposing and um, so when we start talking about it, uh, we'll just have to reference uh, the attachment in the email. Um, so let's start off with uh, questions from the committee and then we'll go on to uh, any amendments. So are there any questions from the committee? And actually, um, Councilor Vio Coppler, you pull this. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I'm not sure. Well, I, I didn't have this question when I pulled it, but now that we got the, the, the amendments from Councillor Villarreal, I am not sure what amendments are wrong. Are they, the, are they listed as RVJCS amendments? That's what's wrong in the attachments? Uh, Councilwoman Villarreal, do you want to clarify what it is we're replacing? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the housing funding plan amendments from myself and, and Councilor Cassett Sanchez, the amendment sheet that's just the regular kind of showing you what was removed and, and added is correct, but the amendments in context sheet doesn't actually reflect that. Okay. And I'm not sure how this version got in here because I was emailed staff the amendments in context today and it was accurate. So I sent you the accurate one just so you could see it. If you feel like you don't have enough time to look at it so that you can compare those two, I'm fine with it. I just wanted you all to have it um, so that in the future, the next um, committee meeting, we can talk about it in detail, but it's really just cleanup language. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. So I see, I guess this, this then goes after this to quality of life and then it goes to governing body on the 28th. So I think that's timely. All right, thank you for that. Okay, so Mr. Chair, my questions are, uh, on the memo to this item on page two, it says uh, it refers to 1.7 million and on page two, and I thought it was 1.8. Is that, is 1.7 correct? Um, Mr. Chair, Councillor Vigil Cobbler, 
Uh, 1.8 is correct. And this, so 1.7 in this memo is not? Right, the memo was written before we finalized the number that would go into the budget adjustment. Okay. All right. Uh, then the next item is just, it has to do with the FIR. I know I brought this up before. It, said, it still says 25,000. And, and I think you confirmed, Ms. Ladd, that that was not new money. That's just what you felt it would, how it would impact the workload. Um, so then my question is, in the budget request for the upcoming budget hearings, did you include new staff in your budget request? Mr. Chair, Councillor V. Hill Cobbler, there is new staff in my budget request, but it not specifically to work on this project. Okay. So, so the 25,000 in the FIR is just an informational piece saying this is what you think the extra workload amounts to in ter if we if we have to do a, a a sample of hey I think this workload costs this much money to do this plan but you're not asking for this money Mr. Chair Councilor V Hill Cobbler that's correct um, I will just say that historically the guidance um, has been conflicting over whether to count the value of staff time if it didn't require new money. Um, so some counselors wanted to see that because they wanted to know what kind of workload this would impose on current staff given their current positions. And um, I think to your point, it maybe is a little misleading because it is not new money. So it it's not requiring the expenditure of new money, so therefore it shouldn't be in the fiscal impact report. I'm happy to do it either way. I uh, did it the way that um, I was told it should be done. And if, you know, it's not really my decision to make how to do it. So, you know, if uh, I'm happy to, to do whatever you all would feel is most helpful. Okay, well, I don't think it's, it's my decision to make either. So I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> many times in the past, <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to, to bring it up because I want to make sure I understand that this isn't like double, double requesting in any way. Sounds like you're not requesting anything at all for this, for this whole uh, work plan. But again, those are all my questions. Uh, I guess I will say that I did read Councilor Garcia's amendment and I am in support of that. I suppose uh, he, he may have his hand up to introduce it. I'm not sure, but uh, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilor Garcia. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and, and so actually there's two amendments that I'm tied to here. And the first one uh, that I had introduced originally by myself, I'm, I'm going to be pulling that amendment. I do thank Councilor V. Hill Coppler for the support, but I've began to work with uh, Councillor Cassett Sanchez on a middle ground, so to speak, which would, um, during a discussion item, during the upcoming governing body meeting, the governing body would review the list of proposed topics that we would review at the committee level and have the opportunity to review and add any additional topics that we believe need to be uh, discussed at the committee level. Um, so I, I can read the way that amendment reads. Um, the, the, the biggest part of it is adding an additional whereas, or I mean, I'm sorry, be it for the resolved that within 30 days of the adoption of this resolution, the governing body will consider as a non-voting discussion item a list of these proposals and recommendations along with the city council standing committee each will be assigned to. At this time, the governing body member, members will be able to propose any additional items, to, uh, additional ideas to ensure all potential revenue sources that the governing body members would like to explore are included in this process. This list does not exclude the possibility of additional proposals or recommendations to come forward in the future and be considered as part of this action plan. So, Councillor, is your amendment part of the part of what's in Prime Gov? 
Um, I see it. I'm, I'm not in prime gov. I don't like to go to the internal site just cause it's got too many bugs and it kicks me out all the time. I'm, I utilize the external site. Um, so in my version of prime gov, I do see it. It's there. Is it the one that's uh, JCS MG amendment? Okay. Right. Yes, Mr. Chair. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So the prior amendment, I will be uh, rescinding. I, I'll be pulling that. I won't be moving forward with that amendment. Okay. Um, and so I'm, I guess, open to any questions on the proposed amendment. Okay. Anyone have any uh, questions for uh, Councillor Garcia? All right. And then as far as uh, let's hear uh, if we can from uh, Councilwoman Villarreal and see what the, the changes are. And again, these changes are in the attachment that I just forwarded to all of you. Maybe you can walk us through those, Councillor, and um, let us know what the, the big changes are. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for this opportunity. Um, it's really just cleaning up um, and making some adjustments to the language. If you'll see at the beginning, it's just changing language that reflects um, those housing development applications. They're not actually housing development that has increased um, dramatically, but it's actually housing development applications that have increased since 2016. Um, language at the on the second page um, about the median sales price and Councillor um, B. Hill Coppler may want to check that, but I got that from the Realtors Association data that in 2020 in the fourth quarter, it showed 606,500 um, in Santa Fe County as the median sales price. If you go and on- can I, can I stop you right there, Councillor? Yeah. Cause I think Jesse mentioned, and I read it in the paper as well, that the median income was around 560 in Santa Fe County. So. I don't know which which number is correct. So uh, maybe Jesse had a chance to uh, look at that. I don't know if Jesse's on still. Jesse's not. Um, Jesse's, I think, going out of town. But I think okay. that one we could just check on. I just took, pulled it from the numbers we got from the Realtors Association report that they sent us for mm -hmm. 2020. So we can adjust it as needed. Okay. Uh, further down, it's adding language that acknowledges that the funding allocation recommended recommendations from the Affordable Housing Trust Fund are made by the Community Development Commission based on housing and urban development funding priorities and emerging community needs with guidance by the Office of Affordable Housing staff. Um, some just other tweaks by Councillor um, Cassid Sanchez that she added that the um, Affordable Housing Trust Fund also covers rental and down payment assistance to eligible residents. And then some other language um, that she adjusted for property management plus that section. And then in the therefore be it resolved, um, we added with staff input that the city manager is directed to create a work plan for staff's support of this process so that each committee is ensured of the participation and contribution contribution from subject matter experts. And then um, some other language adjustments further down on, on page four. And then just acknowledging that the um, quality of life committee shall explore benefits of and options for developing regular and consistent funding from sources external to the affordable housing trust fund that was added um, from staff input. And that's it. So it's mostly cleanup with additional language that was just, um, I think, enhances the process. All right. Were there any questions from the committee for Councillor Villarreal or Councillor Cassett Sanchez on? I don't see her. Councillor Villarreal. He was unable to be here with us. Okay. Any uh, questions for Councillor Villarreal? All right, so we have a proposal with uh, two separate amendments. Um, no questions uh, on either of the amendments. So what are the wishes of the committee? 
Are there any other questions or are we ready to move on? Mr. Chair? Councilor Viejo Copper? Um, I'll move to include uh, Councilor Villarreal's uh, and Councilor Cassett Sanchez's amendments for approval. All right, so we have a motion to accept the amendments of Councilor Villarreal and uh, Councilor Cassett Sanchez. Um, is there a motion also? Well, we got to take that motion first. So any discussion on that motion? Uh, did we uh, ever still need a second? Oh, that's correct. Anybody second in that motion? I'll second uh, for Mr. discussion. Chester. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So I seconded the motion for discussion. Go ahead, Councilor Garcia. Um, no, I was just going to, I didn't know if we were going to uh, then have to make a, a separate motion to include the amendments that uh, myself and Councilor Cassett Sanchez uh, have as well. Uh, we can look at it as a separate, a moment, uh, a separate motion, or if the maker of the original motion is willing to include yours, we could do that. Mr. Chair, I will include uh, the, mo the amendment. I will move to accept the amendments of Councilor Garcia and Cassett Sanchez as well into my original motion. I will state that I did not include them in the beginning because I thought Councilor Garcia was going to do them and I didn't want to upstage him, but I'll include them right here, right now. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm okay with that as a second as well. So do we have discussion on the motion as well as the uh, amendments? I see none. So again, this is for acceptance of the resolution with the two amendments that were in, that were included by Councilor Garcia and Councilor Cassett Sanchez, as well as Councilor Villarreal and Councilor Cassett Sanchez. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Councilor Beta. I just want to thank everybody for working on this. It makes it a lot easier when we, we all come together and and do this. So I appreciate everybody working on this. Thank you, Councilwoman uh, Villarreal. Yep, I agree with that. Um, thank you to all for coming together, taking the time to make these amendments. All right, so we have a motion and a second. I don't see any further discussion. Can we have a roll call vote, please, Ms. Diaz? Councilor Garcia? Yes. Councilor Abeta? Yes. Councilor Lindau? Yes. Councilor Vijo Coppler? Yes. And Chairman Rivera? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Next, I believe we're on the item E, which is request of approval of a professional services contract for PK public relations with water conservation, public re relations and public outreach through fiscal year 2024 in the amount of $254,791.27. Um, Councillor Lindell, you pulled this? And... Yes. Thank you. Do I have the floor, Chair? Yes, I'm trying to see if uh, Andrew's on, on the... All right, Christine's here to answer questions. Okay, thank you. Christine thank Chavez you. to answer. Um, this is a six-year contract. Um, Mr. Chair, Councilor Lindell, this is a four-year contract. Okay, I'm seeing um, uh, under on page three of the packet. Well, actually, it's page five of 35 pages if you're in Prime Gov, but it's page three of the um, professional services contract itself. Are you there? I am. I'm um, just trying to pull up the attachment to look at that specific page. Um, okay. And take a look don't, at feel that. Don't, don't feel worried. Um, well, that's pulling up on my side. Did you have any other questions about the contract that I can answer? My computer's crawling. Here we go. Uh, no, this is specific. What I'm seeing is that 
for 2021 through 2022, um, we're paying $12,366. And then after that, for the remaining three years of the contract, we're paying 74,200 a year. And I'm not seeing a difference in the, um, what, what's the difference in scope of work that we're paying them so much, that we're paying them six times as much money. Uh, Mr. Chair, Councillor Lindell, thank you so much for the question. Um, this contract kind of got stuck in the new procurement process and um, we've been without a strategic marketing contract most of the fiscal year. And so once this goes through committee and it gets approved, then we'll get a PO just for a very small period of this FY. And so the $12,000 will be in this FY and then every, the three years following, it'll be the full contract amount for 74,000. So it's just prorated for the amount of time left in this FY. Okay. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Um, with all the other things that I'm looking at right now with the budget, to be perfectly honest, um, contracts like this give me pause. Um, I, I'm concerned that, um, you know, I understand that this comes from specific funds, but it's not a small amount of money per year. And you know, after spending hours and hours in the budget book, I'm concerned about $74,200 for marketing, um, making that commitment. Um, is this a contractor that we've used for a number of years? Mr. Chair, Councillor Lindell, um, I'd be happy to talk to you just a little bit more about what this service provides the Water Conservation Office. Um, and then, and then I can answer that question. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what question there is, but um, the thing with us in water conservation is that messaging is such an imperative piece of our work. And we've been without this contract this year. Um, we're headed into, you know, really dry conditions, drought. I mean, we're, we're kind of not completely supported going into that. But this contract, I mean, this contractor, they go into our website, they update our content, they update our security, they update all of our social media, they do all of our digital print and ad design, they do all our ad buys for print and uh, digital media. There's message alignment throughout the water division and public utilities that conservation can leverage upon um, that's um, kind of strategically uh, thought about and messaged. Um, there's message alignment across all of our different platforms. Uh, we do press releases. But the most important thing is that we are missing sort of the strategic messaging guide. And um, the contractor from the beginning when we've had a contract will look at the whole year and look at the different times of year and the challenges that we're going to have and construct campaigns and strategic marketing to address those issues at that time. So um, it's, it's way more involved than marketing. Um, and you know the contractor that, that we were able to select offers all of those things. Whereas with other contracts, we would have to, we would have to contract out the website, website piece, the social media piece, you know, the marketing piece, the ad buys. And so we're, for that amount of money, we're really fortunate to receive the services that we do. And you know, I'm, I'm really excited to get that resource back into our office because you know we are in, in need of that moving into spring and summer and our high demand season. Um, so I, I'm not exactly sure there was a question about um, I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit more background on what the what that contract entails. But I think you had another more specific question. I don't think I answered that. Correct. Have we used this contractor before? Yes, so PK Relations um, was our contractor previously for four years and we did undergo an RFP process and um, we did advertise that and go through the whole process of selecting this contractor. And it, like I said, it's taken some time. Um, now we're moving into not getting a PO maybe until the month of May, um, but you know, it is what it is. And you know, we, 
it's, you know, we'll, we'll move on. But PK Relations, Lynn Comer, uh, she was our previous contractor and um, she has been selected, um, you know, for this contract moving forward. I'll yield the floor. Thank you, Councilor Lindell. Any other questions? Councilor Beta. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I understand Councilor Lindell's concerns, but when it comes to water conservation and the job we've done, I think it's allowed us to grow, quite frankly. Something that we always hear is that there's an awful lot of development. Where's the water coming from? Well, this is part of the solution or part of the answer is we are very aggressive when it comes to water conservation. We're one of the best in the country at it, and this is a component of it. So I support the contract, but I also at the same time do understand Councilor Lindell's concerns, but I, I will support it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Beta. Councilor Vigil Copler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I was going to uh, echo the same things that Councilor uh, Abeta did. Uh, it, it does, I think water conservation has a a, a tremendous impact on the water credits that builders use. Uh, and I think it, you, you probably read Kim Shanahan's article recently where he really made a, uh, a very good analysis of it and, and it was very understandable. But the other part of it is uh, messaging. Messaging is on conservation is probably one of the most important things we, we can do because we, when, you, when the public doesn't hear about conserving water then they think everything's fine. Like, like, for example, what days of the week can we water and what times and how long? I can't remember when the last time I read that anywhere. So I just look up Albuquerque's and I do what Albuquerque does uh, because I know that, that we need to, to conserve water. I'm just not sure if I'm in the right or wrong. Uh, but, it, but again, if you don't emphasize conserving water, the public won't do it. And, and uh, it's not that they won't, but they won't know, who, you know, when or if they should do it. So I think it's really important. And then the other thing about uh, PK, I forgot the exact name of the contractor. I, I'm familiar with them and I'm not surprised they got selected because I think they're, they've actually done a very good job on other projects that they've worked on, on outside of the city. So I'm familiar with the contractor, not personally, but, but I know that they do a very good job. So I support this contract as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Christine, uh, so I had a question similar to Council Lindell's about the fiscal year. So the way I read that is fiscal year 21, 2021 starts now on July 1st and goes to June 30th of 2022. So to me, that sounds like 12,000 for one year. When I think you mean is that the remainder of 2020 to 2021, which ends on June 30th would be May, May and June, right? 12,000? Mr. Chair, I, I better double check on that to make sure that the rates are okay. Um, I'm mean, that the, the amounts are, are correct. But I know for sure that the 12,000 is a prorated amount for the rest of this FY, and then the full 74 is for the following three years of the contract. So I will just double check with Maya and make sure that that's what that reads and that, you know, thank you for, for catching that. And, um, you know, I'll double check that that's correct. But I know that the intent of that was the prorated amount for this FY and then the three full years of the contract. Yeah. So I, I understand it. I support it. Just want to make sure that we're putting the right fiscal years in there. So, and it was Councillor Lindell that caught it. So thank you to Councillor Lindell. Uh, the other question I had was um, uh, the way it appears is we're in, a, I believe, a stage four or five drought right now. Do, does PK um, adjust their uh, advertising and their messaging based on uh, the severity of drought we're in? And do we do things that are uh, probably a little more aggressive as far as um, getting the word out. So Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm really happy just to take a few minutes to talk a little bit about what water conservation is doing in response to these very dry periods that we're going to be coming upon in the summer. 
Um, with regard to messaging, um, a lot of the utilities around us right now, Albuquerque Water Authority, um, you know, what they're doing in this stage of drought is they're really increasing their education and, and messaging. And so we will do that. Like I said, we won't have this PO until the middle of May. And so we're really, I mean, our engagement is down on all fronts just because we, we just don't have someone working full time on that engagement on social media on digital and ads. And, but we do have some moving through this period, but as soon as we get this contract and even before then, we are doing some things like working in a joint committee with the county. Um, we're really gonna start working on water conservation jointly with the city county and trying to identify opportunities for that. I mean, I know there's lots of things that we wanna work on with the county, but water conservation is the easiest thing and it will only strengthen our program to extend the messaging opportunities out into the county. So we're gonna align the time of day, you know, like the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and the time of day during high demand. And we're gonna advertise that throughout the city and county. We're also gonna be um, allowing the county to participate in some of our other programs um, where it makes sense and where it fits. But, you know, we're starting to address that, um, you know, in the city and the county together. So we have a lot of different programs now. We're, we're moving from indoor toilets and washing machines and dishwashers to looking at really large opportunities and commercial shopping centers and in restaurants and hotels and where the amount of water saved is just so much greater, you know, but that doesn't mean that we ever stop educating um, our city and county, you know, residents about opportunities that they have to use water in the most efficient manner that they can and for us to offer the resources for them to do that. So, you know, we're this, I mean, it's a, it's a terrible time, um, but at the same time, it's the best time for water conservation because now everyone understands it's very dry and sometimes you have to talk about the emergency in the environment in which it exists. Because when it's raining and it's snowing, people just don't get it. But you know, now is our opportunity to really bring these issues to light and to educate um, our city and county residents you know, to continue to use water more, more efficiently, to address the leaks that they have, and for our commercial customers to do the same. So we're, we're really pushing forward on a lot of different fronts. Um, we have a lot of big things moving forward in 2021. And you know, we're laying out the, the framework to do all of this on a much bigger level. So one thing you will be seeing from me is a group of, I mean, a, a, a collection of a, a few different ordinances that we're gonna be updating relative to our outdoor program, our commercial program and our enforcement program. And you'll see these all in a group um, at the end of the year. And we're gonna you know, get those approved to change the city code to support situations like this a little bit better and you know, just be in a better place to deal with these challenges um, more cooperatively with the county as well. Great, thank you for all your hard work. I look forward to seeing those changes towards the end of the year. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Chavez. Any other questions for Ms. Chavez? All right, what are the wishes of the committee? Move to approve. Second. Motion for approval by Councilor Bill Coppler, second by Councilor Beta. Any further discussion? All right, can we have a roll call vote, please, Ms. Diaz? Councilor Garcia? Yes. Councilor Beta? Yes. Councilor Lindau? Yes. Councilor Vigil Coppler? Yes. And Chairman Rivera? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. We're on to number nine, matters from staff. Ms. Wheeler? Thank you, Chairman. No matters from staff at this time. Thank you. Uh, matters from the committee. Uh, Councillor Lindell. Thank you, Chair. I'm going to just ask um, Director um, Wheeler if she'll address the um, website that's up and the uh, street light uh, demonstrations that will be starting and if there's any community meetings around that. Ms. Wheeler. Uh, thank you, Chairman and Councilor Lindell. Um, yes, uh, so we just launched the project website today for the street light conversion project and community guided design. Um, and sent out uh, a notice of that uh, website being launched to everyone who had signed up to be on the information list. It was uh, all of the counselors should have received it. We sent out a newsletter that had an update on the work on a number of fronts on that project. 
Um, and I think it's really exciting, you know, uh, based because of uh, the amount of feedback that we got about dark skies, the city is now working with the International Dark Sky Association closely and uh, pursuing dark sky city designation. Um, so that's a great outcome from the community feedback that we got. And uh, the, we formed a steering committee that has a diverse group of interested people on it um, that will start have its first meeting tomorrow night. And um, they'll receive you know, additional details about lighting design, um, get to hear from each other about different people's goals in uh, street lighting um, and sort of just get a better sense of sort of the broad range of uh, needs in the city for that. Um, and then the, as you said, there are five demonstration sites that it will be set up and uh, they'll probably be uh, little uh, cards on each of the street lights with a QR code that can be scanned so that people can take a look at, um, provide feedback as they experience the demonstration site. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Garcia. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'll, I'll have some questions, I guess, in the same vein of the streetlight project. And so thank you for setting up the website. I took a quick glance at it during the meeting and it looks pretty good. Lots of information. And I'll be digging through that this evening. Um, Ms. Wheeler, is it possible to get a list of the steering committee members sent to the governing body members? Um, you know what, Councilor Garcia, we, we're really, um, we wanted to talk to the steering committee about that first, given the, um, the sort of harsh uh, emails that have been and harsh sort of treatment of anybody close to the project. We really don't feel like these people have signed up for that. Um, and once it's given to the governing body, it's public information. And so we're actually, we're planning on sharing that. Um, we can talk to the members tomorrow night about that, but personally, it's been an extremely difficult month and a half with the attacks that we've received in email. Um, and so we weren't actually planning on making that list public. But okay. We and the reason. Give, yeah, sorry. So, sorry, Miss Wither, didn't mean to cut you off. Well, um, we do have a list of um, the groups that they represent. So, you know, we like we have a rail yard business, and we have a Canyon Road Neighborhood Association representative, and we have a South Side, um, you know, action team representative. And so, we could give those kinds of pieces of information that might be helpful for you. Okay. Thank you so much. And the reason I ask is uh, twofold. Um, one, one of the committee members reached out to me um, and shared their concerns that they had asked who, who was going to be on the committee and they weren't told as well. And obviously they'll be, they'll, they'll know tomorrow when they attend their meeting. Um, but then uh, the, the second part of that equation is uh, it, it was mentioned in this newsletter that went out via email just a moment ago that counselors had an input in mentioning or providing names. So I, I guess that to me, if a counselor recommended somebody, that person knows who these individuals are. Um, and two, um, I know I can only speak for myself. I wasn't asked for any input to recommend anybody to be provided on this committee. So I don't think that is uh, a complete and fair transparent process if Counselors are pick and chosen who can uh, provide input on the steering committee. So uh, that to me you, is Councilor concerning. Um, it would, what actually that refers to is that counselors were sending us a bunch of um, emails that said this constituent is very interested. And so we received a lot of emails from counselors and contacted people and, uh, and built the committee from there. But no counselor has appointed anybody to the committee. It was solely done by staff. Okay. Th thank you for clarifying that. Um, in regards to the five demonstration sites, and I know we had some email back exchange, exchange in earlier today, and I, I haven't been able to respond. I just want to confirm that at, a, at these five sites, there will be lighting demonstrated with uh, 2000 Kelvin lighting. Um, actually, uh, Chairman Councillor Garcia, there will not. Uh, we have not found any 2000 Kelvin light that meets our spec, and it's also below the range of even something that's under consideration. If you uh, see the email from the International Dark Sky Association executive director that came to the counselors uh, and mayor and myself today, uh, the lowest you see there is that a towns have done 2,700 and 3,000. So 2,000 is way below a really functional range. It doesn't 
provide enough brightness. They actually don't have enough um, reliability. They have a very short lifespan. So if you think that you have a, a fixture that might meet the specifications for the project, we'd be happy to evaluate it, but we, ha we do not have one. Okay. I mean, it's, it's out of my wheelhouse, but I'll consult with some folks and see what, what can be done. Um, and, and the, the brightness shouldn't be a factor because Kelvin's is more so the color temperature, not necessarily the lumens. So, um, but lumens I, I guess, are actually necessary to achieve the required lighting on the street. So that's the tricky thing. You have to be able to get enough lumens out of a light of any color. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I would recommend not to solely use just QR codes um, because even as somebody who has a QR scanner on my phone, it's better for me to just quickly read than have to scan a QR code and go through that whole process. I think uh, using a more streamlined uh, approach that is it is not utilizing a QR process for folks that might not even know what a QR code is. I think we, we, we need to ensure that it's just not solely a QR code process. I, thank you, um, uh, Chairman and Councilor. I, I'd love to comment on that if I could. Um, it's so funny that you said the, Q, the QR code scanner because I mentioned that and you know you don't use a scanner anymore. You just point your camera at it and it goes right to the, right to the thing. And it's so funny because there are so many of us that still think that. So you're exactly right to make it completely accessible. I think the website addresses must accompany a QR code for people who aren't savvy about it. Right. Well, I mean, and for folks, I mean, it, what, what, you've got to understand not everybody has a cell phone in that sense that you can utilize that technology. And we want to ensure we're not leaving anybody out. We're not, we're, we're not leaving a populace that you have to have a smartphone to participate in this process. So um, just, just putting that out there in that sense. Um, and then lastly, you know, as I was quickly scrolling through that webpage, it's, I, I do, like how you refer to Los Angeles and their lighting um, because they were able to, to achieve that not going higher than 3000 Kelvin lighting. So we want to remind folks that lighting can be achieved without hitting 4000 Kelvin watt lighting. Uh, with that, thank, thank you, Ms. Wheeler for all the, the uh, responses to my questions I had. Uh, were you done, Councilor Garcia? Uh, yeah, that, that's all I had. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Anything else from the committee? All right. Uh, matters from the chair, I will let you know that I've asked uh, Ms. McDonald and Ms. Wheeler to give a presentation to this committee on uh, the golf course, the MRC processes, and some of the contracts out there. I don't fully understand how it all works, so I figure if I didn't, the uh, rest of the committee could um, handle a presentation uh, describing what the process is and really what it all entails. So be looking forward to that. Um, other than that, our next meeting is Monday, April 26th. Uh, with that, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you, Chair.